welcome to uh, to this morning session. Uh, hope everybody enjoyed uh, the, the Hawaii party last night. So, uh, so uh, yeah, um, I will try to. Uh, uh, I don't know if we can get some <laughs> some peace and quiet. Uh, good. Um, this session, I'll talk about how to uh, manage your Teams meeting rooms and how you can optimize it and what options there are, both from Microsoft and uh, from the different vendors. Uh, but first, let's start by giving a, a, a perfect great thanks to our uh, premium uh, our Platinum uh, sponsors. Uh, again, in this session, uh, we will touch base with both our audio codes and polys, so uh, special thanks to, uh, to those uh, people. The agenda here, uh, I had to scroll down a little, and it's not like we're going to go in depth with all of them. This is a level 200 session, so it's more uh, a talk, a presentation, uh, what we can uh, can do and what the different vendors can do on it. Um, again, uh, this is me. My name is Carsten Milbach. Uh, I am a Microsoft MVP, and yeah, probably all of you know what that is. Uh, somebody who really likes to talk and do a lot of content and, and so on. Um, I am working as a consultant. I've done that uh, my entire life. Um, I am a partner at a company called Archimentum. And uh, just a little start of what Archimentum is and how can we have an agenda like that when we don't have to have any vendors, any political things like that involved in a conference like this. Um, that's actually spot on what, what we can do because we don't sell any hardware. We only sell um, consultant hours, and the only company that we are loyal to is Microsoft. So that's why I can stand here and talk about the different vendors, what they're doing, and so on, what we see as a positive thing on their platform, and so on. So a uh, very important thing, we don't partner up with any of those ones. We just talk about what they can do of, of goods and lesser goods thing. Um, I have a background in telephony. I've worked with that for yeah, more than 20 years. I hate when you begin counting back because then the aids begin catching up. But um, that's the background. And then luckily before COVID, because before, after COVID, everybody were meeting expert. But in the before, <laughs> so actually one of those that actually looks into it, when Microsoft was beginning to introducing this uh, Android bar and we had like the Poly X50 and so on uh, that makes begin to be there and, and, and so on. So yeah. Um, Again, I have, I have a wife and kids, and normally I enjoyed, in the beginning when I saw a session, I thought, why are people always saying some stupid thing about themselves or something like that? But I actually use it to remember different people. And uh, when I'm not uh, working with teams, I am actually uh, an active uh, horseback rider and judge in the dressage riding, so uh, I think I'm the only guy doing teams uh, meeting rooms and horses at the same time. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> I think I think I actually am. I'm a unique. So, and again, uh, this picture I didn't want to blow it up, but that's actually how my office look right now because we are trying to get a lot of hardware up so we can see it in the different portal I'm going to show. So, so that's my test lab. Um, I was so lucky that a building was uh, tearing down and we had to rebuild it from scratch so I could make my own uh, my, my own uh, office uh, with everything I want. With, wiring in the walls and all that stuff and plugs and so on. I know it doesn't look like I have all my wiring there, but when you install 10 plus system, it is a mess. Um, yeah, and then I just love Teams from the day it started. My background with, with Skype and, and so on. Um, and uh, as you probably can hear, I'm not natively English speaking. So if there's something you don't understand, if I'm speaking too fast, too slow, I haven't heard that yet, but then uh, just raise your hand or have questions. If there's something during this session uh, you want to talk about, just raise your hand. It makes it much more fun. Uh, I put in a lot of rooms so we can have a dialogue on it. Uh, of course, we cannot sit and fix uh, your problem, but we can talk about if there's something that, that you have, have tried or any question, something you want me to, uh, to go deeper with. Um, so the first thing is, what is a meeting room? Because nowadays, we have tons of different ways of doing it. A space where people uh, meet, well, that makes perfect sense. We have rooms with or without any uh, AV equipment, um, especially now to bring your own device. Uh, it's kind of hot again. Then we have 
third category where we have some unmanaged kind of managed uh, rooms. We have collaboration spaces. Um, a lot of uh, places where we use a service hub or uh, Need has a, a board and Yaling has a meeting board as well. So uh, something we can kind of can move around with. Um, that's also a meeting room. Uh, stand up meeting, projects update. We see that more and more that every Monday morning somebody in the team uh, just having a stand up meeting. They want to uh, split that across the organization, across the world, whatever uh, organization it is. How do we uh, do that? That's also a meeting room. Um, boardroom, we probably know that one. That's the classic one with the long table and nice furnaces and everything like that. Um, drop in. We see more and more uh, drop in meetings. I don't know how it is here in the US, but we, we have a problem that there are not, not enough free meeting rooms. So X amount of room are just drop-ins where just come in and sit down and, and you cannot book it, but if you're the first one, you're the lucky one to get the room. So um, yeah, um, mute boxes, kind of the same one. Um, it's kind of funny with mute boxes because when that was introduced, I don't know if you know it, but it's kind of a, a box you just put in your office and think where you kind of remove all sound and you're sitting by yourself and so on. We actually see more and more that uh, we are installing video equipment or meeting room into those new boxes because they're really a nice quiet place to work and you can have a, 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 a small meeting in there uh, with external so um, and yeah and more I mean we see uh, people being creative and find different way of doing it so that's like all the different spaces uh, that we can find uh, meeting room equipment that we want to control um, so in the good old days we had like some defined rooms and to find hardware and so on, but now it's it's moving around. It's it's way more difficult to control it. So uh, yeah. So, <laughs> what do we want to manage this one? I think that that, that is the biggest uh, question we have here: is uh, how can we do that? Because if we just have one, two, three meeting rooms or something like that, it's kind of easy. We unpack uh, the equipment, we install it, um, we we do pretty much everything itself. Go into a management platform, set it up, and so on. So I mean. We do all the steps, but if we want to roll out, I don't know, 50 plus thousand meeting rooms or something like that, we definitely don't want that. We want a process for it. So uh, for a management system, well, we want easy deployment of, uh, of uh, the hardware. It needs to be simple to, to mount. We don't want to, uh, to, I don't know, screw 200 screws in the walls and, and cable management and so on. We want that built into the system. And the vendors are actually pretty good at that. Then we want that zero touch uh, installation. And, and, and what is zero touch installation? We have heard that uh, one touch join, we, we don't want to do a lot of it. Well, in, in my world, a zero touch installation is where you just got a guy installing it. He might be an electrician, something like that, with no IT skills. So he just mount the equipment, make it look good. That's what he's really good at. And then he doesn't touch anything else. Plug in a, a LAN connection and some power on it. Um, and then the installation should configure itself. Um, I think that is the toughest goal to accomplish uh, with what we have here, is how do we actually do that. Um, then the next thing is security. Um, we don't want that electrician to have a, a username or a password uh, for the meeting room, because everybody is aware that if you have that, you can sign in anywhere with that one and have access to team or corporate information and so on. I know that we can set it up in the MFA and so on, but in theory, we need to, to calculate some security in it so we know who is, um, who is aware and who knows uh, different user account and passwords. Um, the next one is, uh, sadly, and, and no manufacturer can fix this problem, but when we receive some hardware, it's not up-to-date firmware or team chat. And of course it's not, because it's been manufactured and shipped uh, around the different warehouses, and, and sometimes you get a box that's been in the back of a warehouse for a year or something like that. So again, how do we make sure that we got that firmware up to date right away so we don't have to wait two or three days before everything is going up? Um, uh, cabling, we have that. Then next step is uh, deployment, when we're done with that, then it's uh, configuration or day-to-day -day management. Uh, how do we want to? to do that. Well, we want to make sure that everything is working. Uh, we want an easy uh, way to, uh, to configure or do changes. Um, if you swap uh, any hardware equipment, 
we want to make sure that, uh, that that's either automatic or half automatic at least. Um, if they're coming new settings, right now, I mean, Teams is probably, I don't know, soon Teams is, is probably that platform that are introducing uh, most new stuff, new features, uh, new functionalities into meeting rooms. So we want to accomplish that. There might be some settings that we need to set. How do we do that? Again, if we have two, three meeting rooms, it's kind of easy. You just walk down to those three meeting rooms and do your configuration. But again, in large scale, we want it to be automated. And we also want to make sure that we test new functionality before we roll it out to, uh, to the entire company. So again, the same firmware application. How do we control that? Um, and here is one that right now there are no, what I'm aware of, solution that makes 200% uh, sense right now is how much uh, use do we have of the rooms. Um, if we are looking only in Microsoft, then we don't get any statistics on it. Uh, luckily, everybody knows that there is this product uh, Stasis that we have heard a lot about, being introduced about, being <laughs> put in the shadow and so on. Um, I think it's in next month that we have the public preview available. And again, don't hang me up on dates and something like that, but it's, it's very close to, uh, to that we can begin seeing more about that one. Um, again, um, if something is not working, uh, how can we uh, get notified about that? Um, I cannot remember the numbers, but one of the biggest problems with meeting rooms is that if something is not working, IT department is not aware of it, then the users that are joining the meeting room have a bad experience. So to prevent that, we want some system that is saying, hey, camera is off. Uh, hey, it's no uh, power connected to it. I cannot get uh, in touch with, with the MTR. And here we'll see, and we'll start with Microsoft Option, because again, um, if not everybody is aware of it, um, on the Android devices, we can like put it into two boxes. We have the application for Microsoft, a little more than one application, but we have application layer, that's Microsoft that are controlling that, and then we have the firmware layer, that is the manufacturers that are controlling that. So, and of course, when we have the application uh, created by Microsoft, we can do a lot of stuff in, in this application. Um, so we have uh, the Teams Admin Center. Um, probably everybody does, anyone doesn't know what Teams Admin Center is? But okay, um, it's not embarrassing to say it. I mean, we are all on different levels and so on. Um, but yeah, that's the one we started with. That's what we're doing all the configuration. Uh, free for all, so if you're a Teams Admin, you have access to it, or if you're any of the other. Um, delegate rights to it, you can access this one. Um, the biggest problem here, as uh, we see it, is that you want to be a Teams admin for doing all the stuff you want to do, meeting and telephony and so on, get the full uh, experience of it. In that package, you are also uh, administrator for channels, for applications, and so on. So I mean, when you get that responsibility to admin um, in meeting rooms, then you actually are, are filled up with more uh, rights than, than you're supposed to have in many cases. Uh, it's kind of, and, and the sad thing is that we see a lot of, yeah, you just get global admin. Uh, sadly, we see that because then you have access to everything. But we have some option with the next one. Um, that's the Teams Pro Management. That's the one that Microsoft has um, has released. It, it, it sounds a little strange to say released because in old days we had some different licenses. Um, I don't know if you remember, we had that Teams Room uh, standard license, and then we had the Teams Room premium license. Um, standard was the one that everybody was using, and premium was if you had Microsoft as a service provider putting out, uh, making sure that everything was working, and the subcontract, the installation, and so on out. But behind the scene, Microsoft was actually using Pro Management for their premium uh, customers. So when Microsoft released it, it was not a new product, it was still something that they had been using for their internal services uh, to start with. And uh, yeah, in the beginning, uh, like everything else, uh, we missed a lot of information. It was kind of a Windows only management tool where we could see some more stuff in it. Um, that was pretty much it. Uh, if we wanted the Windows uh, devices to, uh, to work with it, 
we have to install a client or service on it, so it was reporting back. So it was kind of a process. Uh, right now, it's it's really good. Uh, all Windows MTRs are automatically registering in uh, to TPO management, so uh, no configuration, no nothing uh, done there. That's all automatic. There are one but here, um, and let me uh, start by saying, in my opinion, there's only one Teams room license. Browse have, has the basic and they have the pro, and pro is the one to go with. Um, the basic one uh, doesn't include any security functionality. So just on top of, we are not even talking about Teams um, functionality, we're just talking about security. So again, that basic license doesn't have any Intune, any uh, P1 license, anything like that, so we cannot secure it. So it's kind of an open account with a username and password. Do we want any accounts like that <laughs> in our organization? No. And we haven't even talked about functionality because there are lots of different stuff that doesn't work in this uh, basic license. Yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry, what's that? Yeah, it, it will still be showing in Teams Admin Center. In uh, Pro Portal, we cannot do it because that's a, a Pro functionality. Um, you are also limited, if you use the basic one, you're limited what you can do on it, uh, some schedule updates and, and so on. So it's kind of registering in. You can have one-to-one, -one. you don't have run road, you don't have uh, two monitors, uh, you don't have option for, um, for a scheduling panel out. So it, it's a very, very limited uh, functionality. Yeah. Not, not in this presentation because that's more a license. Uh, uh, but, but if you Google it, Microsoft has a, a really nice article about it where you can see all the different functionality uh, categorized with security and functionality and so on. And again, as this gentleman was saying, uh, phone is not an option uh, on it, so you cannot assign a phone number to the meeting room if you do that. Uh, so I mean, it is very limited. And again, it's free. Um, I use it, we'll see in, in a, when, when we demo here in two seconds, um, that I use the basic one, and that's more for having some, I mean, I'm a poor consultant, so I don't have uh, 50 uh, pro licenses, so I do it for demoing and showing off to, to get some, some stuff, and we'll see what the limitations are on it. So, But just, yeah, to make sure, from now on, unless I'm saying this is a basic uh, license functionality, everything is a pro uh, license functionality. Yeah. Yeah. Tom, Tom has done some, some great stuff. And now that you're talking about Tom, if you're not a member of Empowering Cloud, go be it. A lot of awesome uh, content in there. Um, we are many in the community adding in and so on. Um, but yeah, that's the pro management. Um, and then sign in options. Um, we have had for some times now, we have had, if you ask me, not the best process, but for Android devices, we'll be able to uh, grab the MAC address, put it into the Teams Admin Center, uh, get a code that you're typing into the uh, device, so somebody needs to type that code into the device. Then when it's online, we can go out and sign in remotely from it. So it's kind of an okay way of, of putting Android devices up uh, without giving the installer a username or password. Uh, I don't know if you're aware of that uh, remote sign-in uh, where the device have a code and you go into microsoft.com slash device sign-in or login. Either one of them, always pick the wrong one, but um, then you type in a code and you type in the account and it will remotely sign in the device. Um, Windows MTR has been a little different, uh, but luckily, uh, I don't know how much you guys have seen from Enterprise Connect and a little before, uh, Microsoft was starting to introducing uh, OTP, one-time uh, passcode, and that is in the pro, again, you need a pro license. In the management portal, we can go in, when we have the account, the meeting account, we can set up an OTP code, so you type in, uh, as an installer, you get this code, when the Windows device start up, it says type this, I can't remember how many digits, in or something like that, you type that in, and it will automatically sign in. In that progress, we can decide 
if we want to know the password or if we don't want to know the password. So we can even make it from the integrator that have access to uh, pro management not knowing the password. That makes it even more secure. The problem here is that if you have a scheduling panel outside the meeting room that you need to sign in, kind of need to know that, um, that password because that is a different signing process. And all the scheduling panels, Android based. Good. And we have Autopilot, that's a new one. Uh, I have, sadly, I haven't had time to look into it, but if you have Autopilot on your Windows machine rollout in your organization, you can do that. Uh, Microsoft demonstrated in Enterprise Connect, I think it was 13 minutes and 60 seconds or something crazy like that in a conference wireless network where there was kind of limited traffic access. So we can also do a, a seamless uh, rollout with the uh, Autopilot. On now, and oh, the timer is not start, so hope uh, everything here. We'll just go to a demo. And uh, any questions so far? Yeah. If we take that one, yeah. Um, am I using rotation of the password? That, let's put it the other way around. What can we do with the password if? nobody's aware of this, uh, then the default MTR has a history back in Skype for Business. And if we just install it, start it up, there's an admin account with a password SFC. And unless you do something about it, um, it will come up. I know that Lenovo has changed this process. So when you're starting up that you're forced to change it, you can do something with Intune. So there's different ways we can do it. And I will show you later where we get a notification on it. Which one it is? Here it is. So that's the Teams admin portal. Um, back. I have admin access to it, and we have under devices in here. It's kind of um, uh, different set up in different type. And if we look away from uh, Teams from Windows and uh, Surface Hub, then it's kind of the same idea in all of them because they are kind of addressing Android uh, systems. Uh, it's funny that we have Service Hub as legacy now. Uh, if people are not aware of it, uh, it is that with the next upgrade of Service Hub, it will be a MCR on Windows. Um, and I can't remember the support. It will only be Service Hub 2 and newer that support it. Service Hub 1 will not. The reason is that uh, they're built on an operation system called Windows 10 Team. Uh, not Teams, but Team. And that's as end of life. And Service Hub cannot support that. So. Uh, Microsoft have decided to do it as an MCR on Windows uh, with all the benefits and so on. So we are many that are waiting for what to do with Power BI and Excel sharing and all that collaboration. But we cross our finger, hope that will be in, implemented in it. So if we go in here to, uh, to Teams Admin Center, we, uh, we get a summary, we get a list. The internet is not the fastest one in here, so we get a list of different devices that we have them. Here we can see the licenses. Again, as I was saying, for getting some data in it, I use the basic uh, license. Um, we are limited on what we can do. We cannot assign anything. We can kind of update and we can do edit on it. Where if we take a, a pro license, here we can begin doing different things. For example, that configuration profile. Uh, and it's, yeah, the touch controller is the same here. They're split up. That was very nice in the beginning. It was only one unit, but now we can configure configure and see them um, as two different devices. Again, back configuration profile. What that is, where we can set some settings that are predefined. All those settings here are the one that we normally set on the device, but we can make a template here and saying we can roll that one out to devices. So in this case, I have one saying Denmark. That's probably something about time zone and uh, uh, here. Yeah, time zone. So let's say that you have uh, you have sites in, in yeah, Denmark and in, uh, in the East Coast and West Coast over here. You can make different uh, profiles that you just add into those uh, meeting rooms and they will set up according to this. This can also be done on the vendor uh, part. But again, this is Microsoft's app that are pushing it down, where the other one is the vendor that are pushing into the firmware and up. So uh, that, that's very nice. Uh, we can assign the different, um, different uh, profiles 
out on the on the devices again with the pro license. Uh, you click this, assign a profile, and you just search for whatever profile you have. Yeah. No, not different user accounts. They, they, they used to be seen as one unit. Now they are two different units. Yeah, so the man is separate. Um, they are synchronizing. I think it's a couple of years ago the word uh, was split up. Uh, and then, not, not, not two different accounts, uh, two different devices. Uh, so they work, um, they work uh, synchronous. Um, the problem was that the other one, if, if the link between the main unit and the console was down, you couldn't get hold of the uh, touch control. There were so many things that on it. Um, the synchronization were based on the manufacturer and not on Microsoft. Um, right now, uh, both of them are synchronizing up to Azure IoT and getting a link there. If we, by example, take a, a Poly uh, Studio device, it will synchronize underneath, so both the controller and the Android Will, will be uh, in contact, and then when you sign in with Teams with the same account on both of them, they will synchronize up and, and be displaying. Good. But yeah, here we just assign a uh, search for um, a, a policy and come up, and we will assign that one to it. Um, the Windows one, um, again, yeah, this is kind of an old deal, but. Yeah, Microsoft was saying that you need a, a Teams Pro license for a meeting room, so you could not use a personal tool for it. So that's why it's red and flashing up and saying, hey, something is, is, is very terrible here. But I think the sign-in date kind of explained why. But it's good to have that just to show that uh, how it could look. Uh, the Windows is uh, kind of the, the same here. We can go into this uh, Yale link. Um, we don't have the same configuration profile as we have in Android. We are more or less this what kind of... Uh, what kind of um, equipment is in this uh, meeting room? Um, what is that? That's a Yaling and UVC 40 cameras and some canceling speakers and so on. You can see some history about health um, on it. Hopefully everything is, is up to date. And as a guy for business, okay, uh, not supported anymore. Uh, you can't, yeah, it's not supported. You cannot choose it. You need to go back to a very old from today version, I think it was 4.16 or 18 or something like that, if you still have the Skype uh, environment you want to join this in. Um, yeah, history about what's happening on it. Um, so yeah, that, that's kind of what we are doing here in the Teams Admin Center uh, on it. If we go to, um, to the Pro Portal, I like that. This is the new way. Um, one thing that Microsoft start addressing is that Keeping up to date on what's going on is probably the biggest problem we have. I mean, there's so much uh, new stuff going on. Um, it's a living <laughs> jungle. Um, you might also uh, have some SharePoint you are responsible. You might have some uh, Office, 360, uh, Office uh, packets or something like that. So in here, when you sign into that portal, Microsoft are putting all that's relevant to meeting rooms. Um, so what's new, what's the version, and so on. And something that people are are kind of missing is that if you click up here, you will see an invite, a Teams invite. And if you have any suggestions, anything, you join this uh, meeting every Wednesday, 9 to 10 Pacific time, then you are happy because European or Asian, that's kind of late. Uh, and there are actually somebody from Microsoft that are talking and listening and taking notes what you're saying. So this is actually a way where you, as an end customer, has a way not going into a lot of different portal, but in a Teams meeting saying what you think or what you're missing or something like that. <coughs> Sorry. It is not a support solution. It's not like, hey, I have a problem with my MCR or something like that. It's more about that management portal at the end to bring in. I think it's something that a lot of people are missing out on. Yeah. Um, I didn't plan. If we had time, I can. I, I didn't have it in, in this uh, in, in, in this uh, presentation. Let's see if I have time afterwards. I'll see if uh, if we can do it. Um, yeah. Good. Um, this is not a walkthrough to uh, the entire portal. 
uh, but it's just so you have an idea. Uh, I mean, we can have a session only on this one uh, that takes an hour because there's a really lot of stuff you can do on it and see on it. But again, um, this one is my favorite page. And uh, I can say stupid Danes because uh, then I don't offend anyone over here. But we have a lot of AV integrators that are doing an awesome job installing equipment, knowing how to set up SIP devices and so on but they have no knowledge of Microsoft. They have no knowledge of security. A password on it was kind of okay, um, because we only uh, do it, I did it here. Again, as Jens here in the front row was saying, hey, what about password? Because it is a Windows machine, for example, we have. So when we go in here and incident, we will have security issues. So everything that's related to security are coming in here. And let me just say, I have this one on purpose because I think it's a really good one to, to talk about. So we can see in here that there's a alert that uh, username and password is default, and you can just Google it and don't do it. So, so try to do something about it, fix it on one way or another. Um, so I think that that's earned itself home just that you got an idea about all your Windows devices, are the default passwords or not on it, so you can secure them. Um, we will see different places where it's also uh, showing up, but <coughs> this one here is. Uh, is one that I really enjoy because that's kind of in your face. Um, everything that uh, that's going on here is what is that? That's uh, oh yeah, I have a sign out device. Uh, this is kind of cool. That I deleted the account uh, and then I have this. Uh, what is that? I think it is a yeah CPT eighteen. That's the touch controller for from Yaling, and it's just standing without any account. So I get notification about that. So I have this device that um, that yeah. Uh, is critical, uh, so we need to do something about it. Uh, again, if it's uh, not with a touch controller, it's really critical, and if it's with a touch, uh, uh, not controller, sorry, monitor, then you can do it, but I mean, how many of you guys are installing touch uh, monitors in your NTRs? Probably not enough. I really enjoy touch monitors, that's one of my, <laughs> my things, but yeah. Um, again, uh, result here will have uh, a list of what, what, what has been going on, and we can see what different problems we have had, and so on. So you can see um, backlog of it. Um, because what Microsoft did what, when they were working in the premium, if something is coming up, they're trying on the NTR to do some uh, self-fixing behind the scene. So let's say that I don't have a camera. Um, my USB camera is not working. Microsoft will try to close the, uh, shut down the USB port again, try to do a power cycle on the camera if it's possible, and so on. So when we get an alert on it, most of the working, uh, uh, the PC is working on trying to do some self-diagnostic and see, can I fix this myself? You're still aware of it if you're set up a service now or email notification and say, hey, this room is in, f in failure, but it's trying to do something. And I think it's after 15 minutes, if it hasn't succeeded, you'll get another uh, email saying, hey, I need help. Yeah. All of this one is a uh, Teams uh, room license. So yeah, it will show some of the basins license, you can see that later, but we cannot do any of this stuff. It, it's not reporting in. Um, and a pro tip, if you go home and you have, I don't know, 100 meeting rooms, and you type this uh, portal rooms, myself.com, you start up, it will, it will tell you that you're the first administrator, so you need to have the rights and so on, it will, it will start it up. It's empty, it's completely empty. So you need to activate this service, and then afterwards, I say, take a copy uh, and, and come back next day, um, and then everything is in sync because the devices need to register. Can, you can have multiple devices signed in to that account. Um, see, yeah. Um, a phone will probably work on it. Uh, I don't think you are compliant with your skis on it because a phone will either have a, a, a personal uh, license or a shared device license. Uh, so it, it will work, yeah. Uh, so again, um, I, I don't want to say yes, do that. Uh, it will work, but I, I'm a little concerned about the licensing. Uh, yeah. So. But again, it's the same application that I enable on it. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. It,
I, I wouldn't do it, but but it, 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 it will work. It, it, it probably will work. You'll sign in, so I, I'm pretty sure about that. Um, but um, yeah, resolve the completely different stuff here on it. Um, then we have uh, rooms uh, where we completely different uh, accounts, and if we take uh, this one for example, uh, I don't know, we need to do that one. Then uh, we can see if everything is healthy. We have the settings. Um, on an Android, at the moment, we can only see what's configured and so on on it. Um, if we go to a Windows uh, device, uh, that was also an Android. Wasn't, no, we have, we have some. We will, yes, it is. Lucky me. Uh, meeting room, that, that should be an NGR, perfect. Then you can see we have more here. Again, referring to this one as security. Uh, that was the one with the default password, so we get a notification if we go into the device itself. Here we will have the option to take the settings, and the settings are the same as we see on the controller of the MTR, so we can, we can configure them directly here on it with all the settings that are, that, that are set up here. Um, good. Uh, you can do that with groups, but it's not as advanced as we would like it at the moment. Um, I know that was a, a vague answer on it, but um, yeah. We'll speed up a little because, I mean, uh, yeah, uh, time on it. We want to show some of the other ones. Here we can see the different updates. We have option to have uh, a different uh, rollout for updates. So we'll have like the IT department, that's their MTR, the first one to get updated, and then we have uh, the rest. and we'll have the option to roll it out to boardrooms and so on after, let's say, X 20 days after that we have tested to see, see that one. Um, we can define the rings here ourselves, so that's a different ring we can put on and say, um, what's the date? Caption time, five days, 12. So, I mean, yeah, you get the point for, for making uh, a kind of controlled rollout of them, yeah. Planning, we can do a lot of uh, planning about setting up people rooms if we do standards for different rooms, hotel rooms, meeting rooms, uh, meet sites room and so on. One thing that I want to mention here is that here we have all the different uh, rooms uh, and if we take something like meeting room here, we have the option um, to see what kind of uh, exchange uh, settings. Again, the meeting room is owned by exchange because it's a resource, it's a room, and we can see what kind of options are set here. So if you want to delete this or add subject and so on. If you're in doubt, what uh, um, this option does, you can see, whoa, and it explains if you enable or if you disable, what it will do, do. And if we have the right rights, again, I'm admin for it, I can actually do the changes directly here so we don't have to contact the exchange team and say, hey, this account and that one, we please want to have uh, remove, uh, delete comments, for example. That, that's a, a, a no-brainer. Delete comments, remove everything in the email, so uh, direct guest joins and other things will not work. Uh, you have to do the admin. Yeah, yeah. It's not like a Teams admin have, uh, I think I'm, I was just dissing it, so sorry, I was just logging in as a global admin just for doing what I told not to do. Um, but again, it makes it easy in my sandbox. Yeah. This is linked to the other issue of using the power joins in the meeting room. Yeah. It, and, and we didn't have it in the beginning, so let me say, I am really happy about Pro Portal. It gets better and better and better and better in the beginning. It was like, oh, come on, Microsoft. But it makes sense that so it has to be developed and so on. And when you're in the cloud, it's not going to be a done package you buy. Roll out and that's deep and Microsoft has uh, developer resources to it. But right now, I'm really, really happy about it. Good. For the respect of time, we go. Yeah, Microsoft really wants to get feedback on this one. So, I mean, join that meeting if you have anything on it. And, of course, if you're addressing something that's not related to the pro uh, portal team, they will address it to the right team. I mean, they, they have the right connections and know where to canalize the, uh, the question. Um, I don't want to put this one up because I want to show that some of the, um, the options we can do here. We saw 
about what we can do in Microsoft, that configuration when the device is signed in. But again, we are talking about this zero provisioning. And right now, in my opinion, one of the best way of doing this is with a DHCP option. Some hardware, uh, I know that Poly is one, uh, HP Poly, is uh, one of them that, that are really major in this uh, way of configuring. What it does is that when a device is plugged in, you plug in network cable, in that DHCP package will get IP addresses and so on, we put some information where, um, where the device can look for a management server. Um, and I want to demo that one because I'm really surprised how many customers have come out where this is not set up. And of course you need to clear security and server infrastructure and so on, but it is, in this case, uh, poly, this is a poly demonstration I'll show. Uh, again, uh, it could be uh, Yaling also support DHCP options, so it could be uh, any of those. The concept is the same. We have our DHCP server. Sorry about the size, but in here we have uh, set some predefined options. That's what we have in our packets with, with gateways and all uh, whatever we are setting up. Here we can click add, and we can define a name for it, a t uh, type. 99% is a string and then we put the code in here that will be the option that uh, it's added into the DHCP packet as the equipment is uh, answering to. Audio code also support that, yeah, sorry, audio, for the one voice operation center you can also put in uh, um, a DHCP option for that. And it will work with all the manufacturers' uh, phones again, so if you, I mean, you, you need to know what you're doing here because all devices with that manufacturer, phone, meeting rooms and so on, will catch this one up and it will uh, then, uh, then uh, send to whatever thing we are pointing in. My suggestion is that when you are adding this one, I'll just show you how it looks. Yeah, probably, probably a little space if they have two, they can't decide if they want to ship or uh, Microsoft devices. So that is little, they have a nice background on that. But that house looks in the string here, leave it empty. And then when you go to any scopes, let's say we have this scope here, we have some uh, server options, then in here we can add um, configure option. In here we can scroll down and see it and then we put in the value in it. Um, and that's stupid now, I have to change my password and it's recorded. Nice, Carsten. <laughs> um, but in here we can add it. Uh, the different ones where we add the, the, the content of it. So, uh, and, and, and I've seen other ones, if you have an on-prem uh, management server, some of your uh, headset phones, whatever that I know manufacturers uh, um, portfolio, um, then you screw everything up. So make sure that you put it on the uh, subnet where it makes sense to contact that one so you don't all write some, something that you already configured. Uh, aren't the manufacturers using the same option? No. Uh, two of the major ones, American and a Chinese one, uh, are doing the same, which is kind of terrible because if you have both the products, they're yeah, kind of battling about it. Or yeah, or subnets or whatever. You, you need to filter it out. Uh, audio code or do something else. I can't remember it out of mind. I know a lot of them also use option 43, but that one is used for a lot of other stuff as well. Um, you need you need uh, one wireless operation center for this one. That that is the biggest. Uh, uh, I have audio codes just on the discussion side, but that's taken now. Yeah, one voice operation center is uh, audio codes uh, management platform. Really, really strong, especially if you're in the voice. The only problem is if you don't have a lot of SPCs or a lot of other one, one voice operations kind of doesn't make sense for managing uh, meeting rooms, unless you have a bunch of uh, meeting room. And there's a price tag associated with. Uh, with a one bus operation center. But it's, it's also a little more advanced than the other ones. So that's the way we do, um, we do uh, um, DHCP options. Then I will talk about poly. Is it okay that we have it like this? I mean, let me know if you can't see it because else it's jumping now, PowerPoint and so on. Poly has two things, uh, lens, a desktop app, that's the one where you can configure USB devices and so on and that will also contact into the cloud. We don't want to talk about that. We want to talk about the cloud management uh, that they have. And um, Poly is, and again, completely independent, but in my opinion, Poly is the leader into this management platform. They have a lot of stuff that, that um, that's done. They're also missing some of the functionality that some of the other ones are having. But when you have Poly Lens in here, you get an overview of it. And um, we have the DHCP 
uh, option coming in, so a device would automatically be registered into a PolyLens cloud. So you don't need to do anything if you configure it up. Very smart. Then the device of registering in here, and then we have option for different policies. And there's a tree here with the uh, policies, and it's something we add here. We add it on top. It's not like in, in Skype where we don't have it. It's either end. We are building on top of it. So if we are setting some settings here, it will also be set on site policies, unless the site policy has a different value that's set. So of course, the high up is the owner of the uh, value uh, on it. If we go into account, for example, device model, um, loading. Uh, let's hope the internet is uh, with us. There we go. And we can just, for example, take X52, nice device. You can see it out there in the exhibition hall. Then um, we can configure different settings that we want. So all devices that are coming in will get this uh, put on top of it. Um, yeah, software updates and so on, where you want to put in. Uh, that is actually a boring one. Um, let's see, I have one. So it's the same in the summer where I put more, more loadings in it. Start settings. Um, yeah, then we have some general settings. We put passwords in it. I'm not going to show this one. Uh, one password is enough to, to change. If you're a consultant and you're borrowing out stuff, it's always nice to, to uh, kind of put contact information so you don't lose it. Uh, somebody kind of sometimes forget to uh, return stuff. Um, time zones and so on. I would never in an installation put this one as a device policy. I would do that in a site policy. Creating sites is really awesome here. It's the same with, um, with J-Link and, uh, and the a uh, HP, is that when a device is uh, coming in, it will tell us what public IP address it has and what uh, private it is. And then we can create sites for it, so we know that UK is this public IP address with the subnet of those uh, private IP addresses uh, underneath. So it'll automatically also put the device into that site, and those policies that we have put, again, same as here, it will be uh, put on that one. So that's normal where we put languages and, uh, and time zones and so on, so we have that figured out. Um, if any of you guys have tried to uh, set up some of those devices, the first thing you come out and say, which provider do you want to restart and restart and restart and restart? When you do something like that, you save time because here, it will just load it, get all the configuration, restart without any uh, manual interference with it. So that's why the uh, electrician is, is mounting the small things and so on while it's starting up. Um, so a, a super powerful way of, uh, of doing this. Um, we can do a lot more on it, um, but again, for the respect of time, um, we will go to, uh, to, um, to uh, Yalings. One note on, on, uh, on HP, when you, uh, as an end customer, go to Lens, you just create your own one. Um, with it's free of charge, unless you're buying some AI premium functionality. With Yaling, you need to get hold of your reseller and ask them to create a, a, um, a, a tenant for you where you can, can add in. Um, that's also one of the difference between them. With the poly one, you're the owner. Here, it's a reseller that has access into it that can reset your accounts and so on. The other one, you can't move from one reseller to another one in Yaling, but you just need to be aware that it's a reseller that have a backdoor into uh, to your configuration. I really enjoy it. I can help a lot of customers with it, so it makes sense. We can also do that with the poly one, but you as an end customer have the option to say, delete Carsten's account. Uh, you cannot do that with uh, Yaling. Yaling is kind of the same. Um, I am a little unsure about the US, but because Yaling has a disadvantage that they're Chinese, and a lot of European, I mean, we are crazy about GDPR, and we don't want anything, and, and so on. So Yaling have created some servers that are standing in Frankfurt that are completely uh, isolated, so Yaling cannot push firmware in here. Where Poly, we will also have firmware updates. If there are new ones we can roll out, we can make policies and so on, because we trust the Americans. That's uh, no problem. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but just so you're aware of it, that, um, so some of them you need to push in. I, I, to be honest, I don't know how it is in the U.S. with the Yaling. I could imagine it's the same. Uh, on, yeah, one is nothing. So, so you need to feed your, your management platform with which software you have. Again, the security guys love it because, hey, you are in charge of what's pushing in here. Um, we, uh, 
we, we get a nice overview here, what's going on, we can decide which room it's kind of built up with. Again, Yaling are having a headsets and desk phones and all other stuff, so, so again, they are different. Set. Some of the cool things that we cannot do, hopefully yet, um, on, on Poly is that if we go in for our, now we have a phone, I hope it's online. Uh, we have it online here, and we can go in and see some diagnostic on it. Um, we can actually see, you all know that, that a supporter is being called, and hey, it doesn't work, and what does it say? It says something I can't remember, and so on. Here we'll have the option, if it's enabled on, on the phones, I've enabled it here, we'll have the option to get a screen capture about how does the phone look like. Probably we'll just see a black thing because it's, what is it in Denmark now? Uh, seven, uh, 20 after five. So uh, the problem not home, and we have a slow internet con connection. But normally, yeah, here it is, uh, we'll get this one up. Um, now this is a customer that was nice to let me demo on it. I don't want to restart the phone, but if I, for example, I'm going to restart it and, and refresh this, um, this picture, I'll see the display of the phone so I can see what it's saying. And it doesn't matter where in the Microsoft process it is, we'll see that picture because that's happening on the firmware be below. We can do the same with the MTRs and so on. So that's one of the major uh, benefits about this one. Um, Yelling, as I was saying, has the same thing uh, as the rest of uh, or as HP that we can create sites due to public and private IP addresses. So on. this is really something that I really enjoy and don't understand why other manufacturers don't do that. Um, so, but yeah, that was just my opinion. Um, I think we will go into presentation mode now, respective time. Um, good, let's get the clicker. That was that one, Yeeling. We talked about that one. Uh, everything sound bars and so on. Then we have Logitech Sync. Um, I have a demo of Logitech Sync. I don't have that much hardware in it because uh, I'm limited only to a couple of uh, devices and the customer I wanted to show was kind of, ah, it's recording and please don't do it, Carsten. Um, we also have a nice overview uh, where you can see which device is up to date, which is not, so you get a nice picture of it. Um, Logitech is kind of having another approach where it's code, so you create sites, you can do all the different things, you can make groups and so on, but it's a code that you type into the device. So when you start up a Logitech, it will say either join in or, or be manual, but if you type in the codes for that site you have, uh, it will automatically join into that, whatever you put it into. Um, Security-wise, nice, uh, again, um, I would prefer automatic one, but again, it, it makes sense. In the beginning I was saying, hey, that doesn't make sense, but after done it, at a customer site a couple of times, it's, it's okay. Um, I mean, you're sending a, a code to, uh, to one touch anyway, uh, one touch code OTP for, for Windows, so there are so many codes anyway you send back and forth that are being used one time, so, so it's okay. <coughs> they have uh, management of also the headsets and their uh, free seatings. If you haven't seen this free seating, go uh, to the Logitech booth. It's really nice, uh, especially now the Microsoft are coming with places where we begin to book uh, desks and so on uh, in advance. Um, Good, yeah, yeah, hot desk, that's pretty much the same on that one. Audio code OAUK, um, as I've mentioned, um, MTR-wise, I'm not really happy about it because, again, there's a cost on it. Uh, it's, it's, a big, it's a big management platform to set up. If you have the audio code infrastructure, it's the best. I mean, OAUK is number one into SPC management into configuration voice uh, modules and so on. It, it is really a powerful tool. So if you have your um, audio code infrastructure, go ahead. Uh, it's, it's, it's number one. There's a price tag to it, but I mean, you can save a lot of money on it. it you can automatically uh, do voice routing between countries and so on. You can update different things. You can route based on the network quality. If the bus score is low, it'll redirect calls to other SPCs and so on. Really, really powerful platform. But again, Audio code is also kind of new to uh, MTR. Uh, it's one of the newer players that we have, so uh, hopefully more and more will come to it. Um, but yeah, isolated and uh, meeting rooms, there are some little work that needs to be done and we want a free uh, version of it. Um, Gabra, I was really, really hoping that I could present something. Uh, Gabra Plus is still in beta and to be honest, I. I dare not to say anything, uh, because then I have to uh, give my firstborn child, uh, and I don't want that, she's kind of cute. Um, but 
look out. If you're having any of the Panacast devices and so on, uh, Gabra headset, look out. I think you can begin registering. So if you Google uh, Gabra Plus, that's the new platform, go in and see it. But yeah, I don't want to say anything, but I, I sh suspect that a lot of cool stuff will come very fast uh, on that platform. Um, Need, again, uh, a Norwegian one. Um, they are out here, go out. They just got a new generation uh, uh, bar, so uh, all is good. They are, they are management platforms around one year, and like anything else, it needs development and so on. But they have a really, really super cool functionality. And uh, all the other manufacturers saying, if we don't want security bars and so on, you need to enable it. You can sit, if you have a meeting board, for example, for need, you can get in the management platform, you can get a picture of it, just like we do on. Uh, on uh, the yelling one, but you can click on it. So you can actually click on that board. So if you have a CIO screaming at you, say we this meeting and we can't get it to hold and so on, and it's in the other side of the country and so on, you can actually click on this uh, board. So that, that is really a nice functionality. Um, I'm really hoping that the other manufacturers are, are, are listening in on, on some of the recommendations we have on it because that's a nice functionality. Um, Lenovo. Lenovo, again, have their management platform walls, uh, your, your laptops, what else you have, so they integrated that one and you can do the settings and uh, Lenovo is not big on, on Android, let's just face it, it's a Windows company. So they have uh, the monitor, uh, I think that's the only Android device they have, so everything else is based on Windows and you can take control of the controller, you can remote desktop in and you can do all the cool stuff with it. Again, Lenovo is also trying to be a secure company, so as I mentioned, when you uh, start up in uh, Lenovo MCR, you are forced to change that SSD password. So you don't even have to think about it. it is something that you're forced to do. Um, but yeah, uh, either they have a great uh, laptop management platform where you just put in the MCRs in it. Uh, again, when it's safe. Um, any questions? Um, oh, is that available yet? Yeah, uh, the question was OTP, how, how to do it. Um, and long story short, when we adjust coming in here, that was Pro Portal here, resource accounts, yeah, OTP here. You go in on it, you start an OTP, comes up, and then you can request OTP. That token that you, or that code you have, you can decide how many hours it should live for. Um, where it is the state, so pretty much what's happened, it's a progress um, with step by step where you, where you set it up, create it here. Um, if you follow me on LinkedIn, Karsten Milbach, I have a video showing it uh, how to do that. Um, so yeah, but it, it's a process we start up here. And the cool thing is that we don't need to have the device registered, we just need the account here, we are on the meeting account where we do it. So we haven't even unboxed the uh, MTI at the moment. It's out, in, it's out in, the, in the room. Uh, the electrician comes in two hours. We prefer to uh, prepare this one, set it up, and we just, when he comes in and say hello, we just give him the OTP code. He do all his stuff and sign in. Yeah, uh, really awesome. I mean, that was really something that we were waiting for because MCI and Windows has been kind of little irritating with using and password. And, and I love those customers because it, it works perfect for three to six months and then it just begins sailing and people, it doesn't work and uh, they haven't configured automatically update or something like that. And that's where they call our consultant agency and, and, and we start out helping it. it. It is reliable, but you just need to know what you're doing in it and you need to do some stuff and you need to configure it. It's not enough that you just create the account and sign it in and say, hey, leave it be. Now we have automatically updated, but that's some functionality that, that's new into the uh, team's world. That, that was something that you had to do. So I mean, you would, just like you take a PC and start it up, all good. If you don't do any update or anything like that, it will, you know, it will lack of functionality and, and, and services. And, yeah. That, that was SPC wise, not, not the MTR wise. Right. Yeah, okay, yeah. So that, that number of days that you're supposed to log into the application, 
Yeah, I mean, you, you could. What you could do is that you can make a direct route down to Jehovah installation, and then you can route the voice traffic or phone traffic out that way. Um, but it is kind of a separate part of OWAC uh, NCR. Yeah, I was going to say we, we have some audio codes down there uh, on it. So, uh, but again, super powerful platform. Uh, just new to MTS. Yeah. I'm just curious if, uh, so like, if you wanted to build your own VPN containers for the Hypex spec and you wanted to get that to your volume there. Uh, yeah, if, if you, you want to. Work around for that. But, no. You know, I just want to, like, I mean, I don't, that's just something I wanted to try. I'm just wondering if that's a way. I, I wouldn't, to be honest, I wouldn't do it. Uh, in my opinion, you should never. I know that you can get an enterprise image so on it, so the main joint and so on. But why? Yeah, the MTB don't. I just to try oh, it. oh no, for trying. I mean, the forever ago, like that was. Uh, I, and then we were like, no, we're not going to do this. Let's just go with it. And it's just something that I want.